Hi, and welcome to part two. If you're watching this, then you have a Mac computer, and that means that you're gonna be using MAMP. So go ahead and click download. It'll download a very large file. Um, I'm not gonna show you that right now because it's pointless to do that. Run the, install, run the installer package. I just did, it's finished. And so what that'll do is deposit a couple of files into your applications folder, or a couple of folders into your applications folder. So you have two things, MAMP and MAMP Pro. MAMP Pro is, um, it's like a trial version of their professional grade one. I recommend you just run the uninstaller because it's all it is is taking up space. No, I didn't want to launch it. Run the un uninstaller, just uninstall everything, screw that. There we go. Okay, so what you really care about is MAMP, Mac, Adobe, not Adobe, sorry, Mac Apache MySQL PHP. Apache is a um, server, a type of server. It's called Apache because someone told me this um, long ago when they first released it. It was really buggy, so they had to keep patching it, so they called it Apache. Anyway, that's a bit of meaningless trivia. The M is for MySQL, which of course is the structural query language that is open source and free and used by WordPress, and PHP is PHP. So go ahead and open it, and there's, there we go. So you don't really need to worry about most of this stuff. Um, we'll come back to this folder in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and run MAMP. So it's starting the servers. You can see when they finally do start, you'll get a little green light here or a checkbox or something. This is actually a much more up-to-date version. I don't have a 64-bit um, computer, so I'm using old map. There we go, MySQL is started, Apache is started. So once it begins its virtual servers, then it'll start up the uh, start page. This thing's, um, it's got some system information on it. Most of this is probably meaningless to you, but you should know these two things, your username and password for whenever you are creating a new MySQL database, the user will always be root and the password will always be root. And um, you'll understand where that comes into play in a few minutes. So the first thing we want to do is go to PHP My Admin. You've probably seen this before. PHP My Admin is a, it's a free open source um, MySQL client. That means it allows us to read and view MySQL databases. So, I probably should have said this before, but the purpose of this thing is to say is that we're gonna manually install WordPress. So, go to wordpress.org, download 3.8. Download. So let's just put this on our desktop for right now. Now the, WordPress has this famous thing called the famous five minute install. Um, your first time doing it will probably take a bit more than five minutes. Um, after you do it a couple times, it'll take less. So we'll go to databases. First, the thing that we need to do is create a database for WordPress to use. So we're going to create one over here in databases in PHP My Admin. Let's give it a name. Let's call it my first DB. Um, <clears throat> a word about naming conventions for databases. Always use lowercase, and if you want to use, uh, don't use spaces and don't use dashes. Use underscores. So, my underscore first underscore db. We create it. It's created our database for us. It's completely empty. Don't do anything to it. So the second thing that WordPress needs is, well, WordPress files. And that's what we just downloaded from good old wordpress.org. So you don't really need to know any of these stuff in here. The only important folder that you have is htdocs. Think of this as your root directory. Like when you go to Cyberduck and you go to public HTML, this is that file. In fact, you might even want to give it a label. See htdocs, so you always remember where it is. In fact, put it in your bar, uh, put it in your sidebar, put it in your doc. 
so that you always know where it is and you don't have to search for it. But anyway, so as I just said, this works as your um, document root. And I can prove it to you. Remember, here's our PHP file that we tried to show in the browser earlier. And I'm going to put it in there. So when I navigate to this using MAMP, then it should show up as pr just printed text and not a bunch of code. The way that you get to things that are in your HT docs, like you might think that it should be like, you might think that you do it like this. That's actually not how it works. You need to do it a little specially. It's already helped us out here, localhost slash 8888. This it gets you to your HT docs folder. Localhost colon 8888 slash, there you are, you're in this directory. Um, so since this is called index, it's gonna know to open it first, but I just wanna prove something to you. Yeah, this should just take us to the root. So if we open up yo.php, I'll just change it back to index. We'll refresh this. And there we go. Hello world. There's our PHP code. And there it is actually executed right here in MAMP. So this means that we now have an environment that is capable of both creating and reading MySQL databases and executing PHP code. So now let's install WordPress. Go ahead and unzip a copy of WordPress. You know, something that I like to do is just have this file right here in my HT doc. So whenever I want to make a new WordPress installation, I just double click it. And there I've got a new WordPress folder. So let's call this my first local. At this point, you know, it's this is basically exactly the same way as you would um, manually install WordPress on your server. And if you did the manual WordPress install tutorial, then you should already know what to do. But we'll just assume that you didn't. So go ahead and open it up. This file right here, wp-config-sample, change that to just wp-config, and then open it up. So, a whole bunch of scary PHP code. Don't worry, you don't need to know it. But what we do need to know is our database name. And I kind of forgot it. So let's go back to PHP my admin. My first DB, okay. There's our database name, MySQL database username. As we found out before over here in the original start page that the username is root and the password is root as well. We don't really need to worry about security because all this stuff is right here on our, on our computer. No one has access to it. Root, root, root for the home team. So those are the th only things that you need to set up here. Oop accidentally deleted a quote. Uh, the second thing is that it, you need to define these keys. I don't know what that means really. Um, it's not important, I guess. I mean, it's clearly very important, but it's not important that I need to know what all this stuff does. It's something to do with security, but you know what? All we need to know that we copy pasted it. Sorry, I talked over what I was doing. Um, what you need to do is just follow this link and what it does is it creates a unique set of keys that have something to do with security in some way. I don't know what exactly, I'm not a cryptographer or a computer scientist, but you can see that it changes every time that you uh, refresh. So these are unique, known, known to absolutely no one else. And it use, um, You just select it all, copy it all. Select all that and just paste it all in. Simple as pie. 
go ahead and save it. There we go. I'll close out of that. So we've created a database for our WordPress data to be installed into. We just configured WordPress so that it knows the name, password, and username of the database that we created for it. So all we have to do is install it. Um, the installer is located in the WP admin folder and it's just called install. Now of course we can't just double click on this. It would open up this in the text editor. That doesn't make any sense. So what you need to do is just go to it. We need to navigate to it from our local host. So what is this thing called? All right, so we've created this um, WordPress install in a directory called my first local. Then we want to go to WP admin and we want to find a file called install. .php. Install.php, my bad. There we go. It should be looking familiar. So all we need to do is just make a site title. Well, it's very weak, huh? Uh, That was exactly the same thing. Ah. There we go. Is that good enough for you, WordPress? Success! WordPress is now successfully installed. Let's just log in. And there we go. WordPress is now running completely here on my local web on my local development environment. Isn't that cool? If this were my laptop, this is I'm doing this at the uh, Jeep computer. Um, sorry, Everett computer. Um, if this were on my laptop, then I could go for a stroll and develop my website. I can go to a coffee shop that doesn't have any service and uh, work on my website, I'm free, free and clear. So hopefully this has been useful to you.